Yeah. Super. So let's go to the aha moments from the from the weekend summit. Your 45 pages. I don't know. I, I don't know how many <laughs> I have, but I wrote like I wrote down a few things. Um, first thing actually for me was I, I can't believe how much value I got out of this weekend. Like I'm I'm just like what like how does this even happen it's like where have i been before because for such a little money i got i got answered all my questions plus there was you know like extra things that i didn't know and that i could learn and connect with people and and i'm really like i'm kind of like well i don't know this is network marketing or something but when you get so much value you you can't be ignorant it's like i'm super grateful for that yeah, it was, it was incredible. And, and like I said before, I've been in a lot of coaching programs and I've, I've seen a lot of material and stuff. And I was, I was definitely wowed about this weekend and how like every day I wanted to come back. You know what I mean? Like it was like eight hours Friday and then you would assume like, okay, I'm a little tired. I was like, no, I was like, when are we getting up? Like, I want to get back into this. And it was another eight hours uh, Saturday and then Sunday as well. So, uh, and then and the fact that they do it, I think they do it um, every four months. Yeah. Um, so I think that's amazing. Just in that is super valuable because that's, that, that ticket is well over a thousand dollars. I think like just being exactly. around those types of people and surrounding yourself, yourself with those types of people that are doing the things that you wish to do is super important. Um, especially today with everyone, so people thinking certain ways and stuff. So I think that's huge. And then, um, the fact of the actual program, which I'm jumping into this week, um, mm -hmm. of calls every single day. And, um, they have in the media center that they have like actual like programs within like like sales programs and yeah, business program so it can it can be overwhelming trust me but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's nice yeah but i was thinking the same i'll just jump on the calls this week and then see what happens and how it feels and you know because because it that did feel really good over the weekend and it's like okay let's see how it's but yesterday the mastermind call was amazing as well it was so you know just asking the questions and answering and, and someone will know the answer it's like wow okay you just like need to spend an hour it's, instead of being on your set like by yourself trying to figure out stuff yeah, it's really, it's really jumping into like Napoleon Hill says, um, the group think or the collaboration mm. of so many people. Cause even with myself, sometimes I'm like, I'm at my apartment doing my work and I think I'm doing the right thing. But in reality, if you like, okay, then I asked Bob a question. Like we were, and if whoever's listening, I like, we were both were able to speak to Bob Proctor directly. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. We paid $14 for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Our $14, $14 talk with Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he basically told me like my main focus right now is um, the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And he told me mm. that I should start targeting group coaching now to impact mm. more people and also more income as well. And I was like, wow, I, I had those thoughts, but I wasn't going to do that. So now I'm just re I'm like taking his advice because he's been doing it for yeah. 60 years. So no one else told me that. And then I was able to ask my question to Bob. He gave me that advice back. Now I'm able to, obviously it's my, my on my end now I have to take that action. But I think I think that was like a big thing for both of us, like big steps. Oh yeah. Cause that was, uh, and that's another thing. I wasn't too sure about the quantum leap. I know sometimes in a life there happens the quantum leap and you just go from one thing to another, but um, in recent years, and that was more because I went through sort of depression and I started approaching more things step-by-step -step mode. And I realized, oh, that works for me. You know, like even with my vision boards, I'm like step-by-step -step and it, it, it works. It works really fast. But if I, set like a huge goal it just like sometimes it doesn't feel like it and it's too far and I don't take the action and now I was there I was like okay I have my book thing and and this and that and I asked the question and, and when he said like send the chapters I'm like that's the quantum leap <laughs> for sure <laughs> yeah yeah quantum leap is it's a very powerful word just alone like if you tell someone that I'm like hey hey uh, to one of my friends I'm like quantum leap They're like what is that like it sounds mm. almost like mystical and and like outrageous in a sense I think when I first heard it I was like what the, what the heck's a quantum leap but I think it's definitely possible like we saw we saw examples of it like um I'm not gonna say her name but she went from a certain income to another and and yeah. like blew up her whole business and that's not even it it all starts with like 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 the internal self how you look at yourself and that so if you can work on like your subconscious mind or your unconscious mind for people that are listening and and learn how to basically do habits and things that condition that to success, then you take those actions, then it's inevitable. Like you're going to, to reach the destination. And it's just, it's just the fact of like me talking about being my corporate job, I was going to work and then I was going out on the weekend and drinking. And then on Sunday I'd be hung over and order, and order like takeout. Mm. And I did that. And I was just in that little box of doing that every single weekend. And I 
maybe I knew deep down I wasn't supposed to be doing that, but I just stayed in there, you know, for like years. And then finally I removed myself from that box and I gave these other opportunities the chance to come in, stop, stop the partying like that. And Still now I'm like, now, mm -hmm. and, and, and also like, I didn't mention this, but I was in extra help classes till 16 years old. So I mm -hmm. thought my whole life I was stupid and not smart. And now mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, I'm actually pretty smart. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That's, that's Lee, that's yeah. Lee, that's Lee, like a internal thing. Like something was wrong with me and it was, mm -hmm. it was conditioned that way just because of the feedback I got that people like during school in um, middle school and high school till I was 16, I would get that extra help. And I always mm -hmm. knew, like, I was like, I don't, I don't think I need this, but like, it, it definitely hurt my self image. But now it's like, I'm like the last few years I've got myself back and I'm able to do that. And the, the last thing that not everyone will agree with me is the growth mindset versus the fixed. I'm completely mm. with the growth mindset. So if, yeah. I, if I'm not, if I'm like, okay, I'm not good at public, public speaking or I'm not good at sales or marketing, we have the internet right now. We have mentors everywhere. You don't even have to be with them in person. We have virtual stuff. You can go out there and learn it. And trust me, I'm a firsthand example of that. I've, I believe learn, if I don't know something, I just go and learn it. And we have mm -hmm. access to more information ever than the history exactly. of mankind. Like, Bob Proctor never had access to all this information. Tony Robbins never had access to all this information. We have access to this, but the issue with this is they always had to take action. Bob and Tony, they would have to take action to learn. A lot yeah. of millennials or just people our age or whatever, uh, we have all this information, but we just store it in our brains and we don't take action. So that, I think yeah. that's, the, that's the little gap. How do you actually like talking about this? Because growth mindset is so popular, you know? And then you see the growth mindset versus like growth mindset and action. Like how do you overcome that? And when you also work with the clients, because I love inspiring speeches all, I can listen to them all day on YouTube. And then I think it was two years ago. I was like, okay, Monta, stop, take the action. Once you take the action, <laughs> then you can go to the next book, next video, next, whatever course, like from now on, it's like the action now. That honestly, that's a big thing for people that are just in business, self improvement, or personal development industries, or anything like that that just want to improve their lives or grow. Is we get consumed by the information, mm. <laughs> and we get like, okay, where's the next program? Where's the next program? And and the truth is, there's two types of there's there's motion and there's there's actual action. Mm -hmm. Motion's like motion's like what I say, like I'm learning this program or I'm taking the, I'm doing this. No, oh, like you feel you're growing. Yeah, you're taking this information, mm -hmm. you're putting it into your head, but the actual action gets an outcome. So if it's not getting an outcome, you're not really taking action in the, I guess you could say in the physical world. Yeah. If you want to talk about it like that, but you obviously in your internal self, you're getting that information. Like I could, I could read a hundred books about marketing, but if I don't market my business, I'm not going to grow. That's the truth yeah. of it. That's why I say it's, it's, it's 80% mindset and 20% strategy. Cause that's the 20%. I know Bob says it's 95% mindset and 5% strategy. So everyone has a different tie on that. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the point is mindset is huge in that fact. But then you also do need the, mad, the mindset to take those actions. And that's the big thing too. You mentioned like coaching and stuff. Like my coaching, a big part of it is I hold them accountable. Like I have worksheets, I have uh, mm -hmm. trackers. And trust me, I'm pretty blunt with my, my stuff. I'm like, if, like what, what do you do this week? And if you didn't do anything, if they don't get a result, and you're, if you're measuring um, your progress and it doesn't have to be your business or it doesn't, you can measure anything. You have to measure it to see if you're getting a result. If you're not getting a result, um, it's just because you're not you're not taking those actions. That's that's the truth of it. Or you're not taking the correct actions. So, it's it it does come down to exactly like action steps. What your major goal is? Is that aligned with that goal and stuff like that? So, what are your actions after this weekend? The ten the ten ten <laughs> things ten. What what do you have there from your notes? Oh, I I wrote down. Um, I think a big thing we just we should discuss is the the income earning strategies, like how mm -hmm. Bob opened it up. I know oh, I know about the, this. The three one? Oh no, those are different ones. Tell the me the three. Cause, yeah. Oh, because three I ways. Wasn't, I wasn't there for the first one. I wasn't there for oh. the first opening because I missed an hour. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I will have yeah. to do it right now. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it. So there's, there's three income. I can take strategies. notes. <laughs> Yeah. No, seriously. Uh, there's three income earning strategies. The first one is M1 and that's what 96% of people do. So that's, that, that's what 96% of people do. And that's trading your time for money. So that's like the corporate job. That's the nine to five. Um, the issue with that is saturation. So basically you run out of time. Eventually you're going to hit a point when you don't have enough time and you're going to be overworked and then it's going to start affecting your health, wellness and stuff like that. That's why like a lot of people that, even I talk to or people that I know are earning a good amount of income at their nine to five. But if you're, if you're earning a lot, but you're working 80 hours a week, that's just not sustainable. Yeah. 
So that's yeah. the issue with that. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of people, at least I know in America, they could be like, okay, I'm making, I'm making a hundred thousand a year or something like that. But then it's like, okay, how many hours are you working? Oh, I'm working 80 hours a week. Yeah. Okay, and how normal, many days don't, don't, off do you have or holidays? Exactly. So the normal work, <laughs> work week is 40 hours. So yeah. if you divvy that down, that's really, to me, that's like, okay, you're making 50 K for 40 hours, mm -hmm. but now you're working double. So to me, that's like, okay, that's like, stay away from that. Stay away from that stuff. So that's number one mm -hmm. is 96% of people trade time for money. Number two is what 3% of people do. And um, that's, money for money. So that's like investments, real, real estate, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So a lot of people know about this, but they're not, they don't have either the people around them or they don't know. No, but how that's passive income, right? That like yes, the yes. Kiyosaki would say like passive income. Yes. Yeah. Passive income. Yeah. And um, a lot of the issue with that is a lot of people don't know like what to invest in or what stocks mm -hmm. are going to do what, or they don't have the people around or they hire people that take tremendous amount of fees from you and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, so that's number two. So number one was the 96% of people time for money. Number two was uh, the passive income, the 3% money for money. And the big one that Bob's talking about is uh, the multiple streams of income or multiple sources of income. And that's M3, mm -hmm. which is multiple uh, sources of income. And that's what the 1% of the world use. And the truth is that the 1% um, own 96% of the world's money, which is crazy. Like, so just I think know. about that. Yeah. 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 So they have multiple sources of income and that's having, that's having not just the time for money, but they, they stray away from that and they have money come in while they sleep and stuff like that. They have money coming in from this business and this business and they have people running it and they, they take all the money they make and they, they flow it back into their business. So a good example, and this is why we're mentioning this is the MSI connect summit that we were in and um, we're mentioning right now helps you develop that and get multiple sources of income. So that's what the 1% do. And that's the whole thing. That's, that's the key to financial freedom because you don't have to, to, to have a multiple source of income. You don't necessarily have to put your time into it. So you can be working 10 hours a week, but still making a large amount of money and helping a large amount of people compared to the person that's trading their time for money. And they hit that, that, that point where they only have enough time in a day. Yeah. I had that. I think four or five years ago when I was working for the British Consul and I used to teach English and uh, it was a really nice job, good salary, everything that you would want. But um, I turned and I was like, well, I really want to know myself. And I was like, I just want to spend like four hours a day to get to know myself because I had just also finished diploma for teaching. And it was a lot of still like you explore the psychology of teaching of how to get people in the right mindset so they can soak in the new words and and whatever they need in language and there's a lot of motivation as well there because it's not only about language i was like no i'm like and i i went for even though i had worked as a freelance all my life but at that like it was like consciously okay this is my choice i want to know myself because i can't trade like there's just this much time in my life i, I can't do you know both uh, but yeah, um, how do you see yourself in MSI, like with coaching and with what else did you have like thoughts, like brainstorming over the weekend? Or? Oh, I, I had a lot of thoughts. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have the coaching program. So I'm going to start doing the group coaching. I'm going to launch that mm. up and come up with a plan this week and talk to a couple coaches. And um, I'm also coming with a training, like a, a modules. I don't know how many modules mm -hmm. it's going to be, but it's going to go with that. So I'm just gonna, I really wanna network in there because I think that's very powerful in itself. Um, and especially right now, I think during the pandemic, like if, if whoever's listening to this call or us, we're able to network online. And that's, that's oh, yeah. like, it's I know, I know this, I know this um, on Netflix and stuff, there's shows about social media, how it tracks all your stuff. And it's so super, super scary. But on the other side, you can use it in a good way. You can help a lot of people and contact a lot of people through social media in different countries. That's why we're literally on this call right now. So yeah. it's, not always like oh social media is the devil and everyone shares negative stuff you just you, if, if, depending if, who you follow to i had when i was going out on the weekend and drinking all the time i would all i would see is all negative stuff and stuff and then on my instagram i just started following all these people and now i go on there um during the day and it's like all these great quotes and stuff and i'm like this right? is awesome. yeah. <laughs> like this is but, so inspiring i love you guys <laughs> yeah so it's really it's really about that and it's mm. it's bridging through that gap because a few years ago i would be like oh that's you know I swear to God, three years ago, if I looked at myself now, I'd be like, I'd be, first of all, I would never have guessed this at all or how this happened, yeah. first off. Second off, I would be like, I'd never have wanted this. Like, I, like that's what I would tell myself in like an mm. ego state, but my soul, my soul deep down wanted it. So it's just like getting, what I said a couple of weeks ago, I made a post, it just came to you. I was like, ha uh, happiness is knowing yourself. 
That's truly what it is. Definitely. If you, if you know yourself, you're able to take those actions that, that you want deep down instead of, mm. cause there's so many things, there's judgment going on, there's fears that just like block you from, you know, just taking those actions that you're supposed to do. So now like, I just, I just like ask myself the question, do I want this? Is it aligned with my big goal? Everyone needs a big goal. And if it is, then I take that action. If it's not, and if it's even a good opportunity, then I'll just mm -hmm. say no to it. And I'll just figure that another one will come. I think that's a good mindset to have for a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. Let me see. Talking about goals, goal cards. Um, do you use those? Oh, you, I was just gonna—I was just gonna show you, but my phone's uh, my phone's <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah, I have I have a goal card. I actually have one right here, but I keep one in the back of my phone case. Mm -hmm. um, so it says um, it says the big goal. It's all it's and it says I I don't know when I said it. It must, it must have been six months ago or a year ago. I think it was six months ago. But basically, it says I'm so happy and grateful now that my coaching and um, business has taken off. It's impacting lives. I'm making so-and-so mm -hmm. amount of money a month by December 31st, 2020. So it's coming up. Mm -hmm. So you want to, you want to do a goal. You want to be clear on the service you're giving. And um, you also, if you want a certain income amount, uh, be specific on that. And then you want to give it a date. I yeah. think, I think, I think that's big. Do you have a gold card? Do, so I don't have a gold card. Cause I, so you see for me, it was like, I have affirmations. I journal a lot. Like those are all my, well, Oh, there no the other side those are all my yeah. journals and like I journal like one journal a week because I write a lot of affirmations I do a lot of you know like future best case scenarios or where I want to be who I want to be and you know like just making that mental picture in my mind uh but then she said goal cards also like affirmation with a picture I have never done that so maybe that's because I have like vision boards as well which have you know like um they have certain like amounts of, for example, for the podcast, there's like how many listeners and in what time. So I think it's, it's, it's same-ish. I just have them in different, in different ways, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. And the whole point, like, I think a lot of people that don't really understand like vision boards are like, Oh, like law of attraction that like it's fake. A lot of people do that. And um, hopefully it's not people I'm listening right now, but the truth is that it's all about the subconscious mind. And the things that impact that subconscious mind are first off their emotions, their images, and their repetition. So if you have a vision of anything in front of you and you look at it enough and it has an emotional spark within you and you repeat that over and over, it's literally going to yeah. change your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind runs 95 to like 99% of your habits every single day in your mm -hmm. thoughts. So if you're, if you're late doing that every single day and you're moving, you're, you're emotionally involving yourself into that vision board that has whether it's your career goal, uh, your family goals, whatever it is, your personal mm -hmm. goals, eventually you're going to have that, that you're going to want to jump on that because you're, you're, you're training yourself to do that. And then you take, and then you just have to take that action 1% better every single day. If you do that every single day, you're 76% better, um, 76 times better by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not like, it's not, I mean, I believe in a lot of like quantum physics and stuff like that, like the guy discussed um, on the summit. And he really yeah. did a good example of that. <laughs> he was same... amazing with the electric. <laughs> that was, I was like, what is he really doing that? <laughs> so for those who don't know, what, what was he doing? He had the power something. You can probably explain it better. I don't know if I can, but um, he basically had. I don't know what something, this, what's something... the machine is called. Yeah, where so he, he had some machine that generates energy and then he had a light bulb in his other hand. He was able to touch that and the light bulb would light up. <laughs> yeah, so, so so <laughs> yeah, so basically you can see uh, as humans, us as we're conductors of, of electricity and energy is, is, is pretty good mm. um, in that sense. But he, um, I don't like to mention names, but he did a great example of um, I think he was, was he like a scientist or professor or something? I don't, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. remember. But he did a great example of comparing physics um, to goal setting and how uh, everything goes line in line with that. And I think that was like extremely important. And I, I really don't want to speak on that now because I'll do it this justice by doing that because he had like all these slides and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, I think... I think his main thing was that basically energy is information. Um, the reason we're on this call right now is because information is being transmitted through these invisible fields around us. So we can only see, I can go into this quick, but we can only see, uh, we, we can't see 99.9999% of what's around us. And I'm talking mm -hmm. about the electromagnetic scale. Mm -hmm. So like the microwave, um, Wi-Fi, all that stuff that's in that scale is going on around us and impacting our bodies. And we just can't see that. That's a scientific fact, by the way. And so like, even that we're transmitting these signals that go, we're matching on that frequency. And now where that information is going on to our computer screen right now, everyone's tuning in. And then even 
and, and I know you know this, and even the audio is now going from there into our heads. It yeah. being the same thing. And then our body takes in the five senses and um, basically transmit that, transmits that into our brain. And then we get our, we get our reality. And that's what's super cool about it. It's amazing. What did you, what other um, action? I'll read also some of mine. Well, I had a good remember. quote. I had a good quote about money that um, someone said. I, I wrote it down somewhere. Um, money goes where it's invited and stays mm. where it's welcomed. Oh, yeah. I had that, yeah, well, I think, too. Yeah. I was something. like, oh. So it's, it's money goes where it's invited and it stays yeah. where it's welcomed. Yeah. 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 There were a couple of re really good quotes on money because uh, when she, I don't remember her name, but when uh, the lady started talking, because I got to the second one on Friday and uh, she was talking about money minds. At first I was like, I couldn't get really into that. And it's not that I, I know how important the money is, but once I got um, on writing about my book that I want to write my book, I was like all in. Because for me, like, oh, the number, what you want, what's your net worth, this and that. No, it's like, oh, okay, like, like one focus but it's like writing the book and then i was like in and i loved how they said like make a million look small that was something that i hadn't used before um that yeah was, that was a great example of how to overcome your whatever limiting beliefs yeah i think a big thing is and the point of that was like a lot of people have the wrong perception which is our interpretations and our viewpoints on money a lot of people think it's like the root of all evil they think it's evil mm. people with money are assholes um, it's just, it's just stuff like that, that we were conditioned from our family and our just society overall. So what they did in the summit is they gave us a different viewpoint on that. And she actually had us write down, it was like a money love letter. I like love that. That was so yeah. beautiful. <laughs> if anyone listening had, I mean, you could probably do this with some of the people on here, but, yeah. uh, not right now, obviously, but she, we, uh, wrote down, it was like 15 minutes, a love letter to money. And it's basically to change your belief about it because mm. money's an energy. Money's always emotion. It's an idea. It's a desire. And we're all, we're all able to be abundant. It's just if we allow that in and we take those actions to get there. And it's just a lot of time, it's really jam-packed down with all those conditions and those beliefs that we have, those self-limiting beliefs. Um, so what the money love letter does is you write, you write a love letter to money, um, I think in first person, and you just you talk about your relationship, what you want to fix and how it's going in the future and how everything's great. And then after, it's really cool because you feel so much different about it. And, exactly. Um, and I, I'm a true believer in that. I think, I think you have to understand that because in my eyes, I'm not like, oh, like I want all this money so I can get power. That's not how I'm thinking. In my, in my eyes is the more money that my company generates means that the more impact that we're having mm -hmm. and I can put it back into my company and then I can help more people and just keep on exploding that over and over and over until yeah. you expand. And then, and then eventually I want to go into like philanthropic things and, and give back to people. So um, it only enhances who you are and it only it exposes and enhances who you are. So if I'm a real bad person and I get a couple million dollars, I'm just probably going to spend it in a bad way or not, not do the good things with it. But if I'm a good person and what, and both of us, our foundations are really good and we're learning a lot to build that foundation up so that we're able to do stuff with, with the wealth that comes in or with the clients that come in and, and the impact that we can create. So I think that's the big thing is that um, it's not evil. It's the people that are, that are using it. Um, what their motives are and and what they want to do with it but I, I think i think that's a big misconception that a lot of people have yeah but then also like the perspectives also you know if i tell you something like oh that's a lot of money for you it might be a lot it might be like a little and it's all like but we have this fixed mindset of something that we have learned oh that is that's a large amount of money that's a small amount of money something and then when you start questioning yourself it's like wait but for me like is this really expensive or not like how much like coming again, like back to yourself and like understanding, because for example, you said like, oh, you want money for, uh, to get, uh, you know, like to recycle back into your business. And I've experienced in the past few, I think months, how amazing it is that I can just spend time with my brothers and sisters and that I, we can go and do some fun stuff. That's where I can use my money. And, and that motivates me. Like that's yep. something that's like, oh, wow, I can be the cool sister. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so as well, it's like, okay, the money's here. But that's mm -hmm. not our focus. Our focus is what can you mm -hmm. do with it? It's like out here, like what, yeah. what can you do? Do you want to spend more time with your family? Do you want to grow your business? Do you want to travel? Um, for me, like I want to grow my business now so that I can slowly dip down my hours so that I can travel and spend more time with people. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to become, there's a difference between like the business operator and the business owner. That's a whole nother mm -hmm. discussion. But basically a lot of what I help uh, people do is become business owners, but they don't become slaves to their business because a lot of people yeah. create something 
It's like creating, it's like Frankenstein. I created a monster and then they go into it and they're doing, they're doing 80 hours a week in the business they created and mm -hmm. they're basically a slave to their business. And that's, that's like a big fear of mine. So that's, that's not good either. But yeah, I think mm -hmm. I, I agree with you there. That it's what your, your motive with it is and what you want your plan to do with it, um, with the money. And that's how you can find out a bigger why is, oh, not that I want a million dollars or not that I want a hundred thousand dollars, but why do you want that? What do you want yeah. to do with that? And if you find out what that is, then it could really, that could help you like get up in the morning and not snooze your alarm clock and figure out exactly why you're on earth and what you want to do. What would you suggest to, to find that? Because for me, it's mostly through journaling and I can really feel like, like when I said, like when we started and there were like describe in detail how the money feels. And I was like, yeah, you know, when, when people were like ocean view and the cars and I've lived, like I traveled for the past 12 years. So I've lived a ton of the things that people ex explain there. And I was like, no, it's like, for me, it's like, it just doesn't resonate. It's not yummy anymore. Yeah. And like I said, once I, um, I think we got to the second one or something or the third, maybe the love letter that was good. And then, uh, and then yeah, power life script or something. Then I was like, Oh, okay. Like the book, like that's what I want. And, and then, and it got like powerful. Um, uh, but how do you explore? Like, what do you really want to do with it? Like what's, what's your, you know, like, you know, that you want to recycle it back in a business and then eventually travel more. Yeah. Uh, what I use, I actually have an exercise. It's the seven layers deep exercise. And it's basically mm -hmm. saying it's basically, gets you from out of your head into your heart because that's what you want to do you want to get into your heart so you know exactly Can why you actually it, want to do it, it is it long or like oh it's like it's like a it's like a tool i offer in one of my coaching uh, programs but we can do like a mm -hmm. short version of it. i can't i can't bring it up right now um mm -hmm. but basically it's i i can't remember the exact question but it's um it's why do you why do you want success basically and then mm -hmm. you would answer and then you and then you'd say it again and i rephrase it back to you until we do it seven times Mm -hmm. all the time with why right yeah so that yeah. each time and then after mm -hmm. about the fourth time it's gonna get very difficult and you're gonna be like oh uh mm -hmm. you're gonna get very confused and that's when you're having a breakthrough because sometimes mm -hmm. confusion leads to a breakthrough a lot of the time so then by the end of it you're gonna have at the very end you're gonna have the exact reason of why you're doing all that garbage like i say gar i say i say garbage because it's it's a it's a filter sorry i, I should have mm -hmm. said garbage but um another example is this if i'm talking to a client and they tell me, I'm saying, okay, so like, what's going on with you? And they tell me something. This is the issue. Yeah. That's usually not the issue. Hmm, definitely. And you have to keep, keep getting more information. Can you tell me a little bit more information? Um, can you tell me how that's an issue? And then by the time you get like lower and lower and lower, it's mm -hmm. something completely 360 from up here. So like by just asking those questions, you can save a lot of time and help a lot of people because if I just stopped at the first question, okay, well, hmm. and they said their issue and I just started talking about it after an hour, I really didn't serve them because that wasn't actually their deep issue. Yeah. So, so that's like the whole approach is like getting down as deep as you can, not too deep that they're uncomfortable at where that comfort point is, uh, serving them at that level, serving the clients at that level, and getting them to have breakthroughs and actions at that level. So mm -hmm. that, would be, that would be a good example is just going from your head to your heart. And I think that's, that's the big secret with that is um, to start thinking with your heart a little bit more and with your gut. Definitely, yeah. I've done it with a with a coach as well. That why 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 <laughs> why why letter <laughs> why letter. Uh, um, what else was there for you? I I've done a little bit of mirror work, but I think I should get into that. So that's my action point as well. Um, I I do write that my affirmations are on the mirror in the bathroom, but it's not the same as you know like doing every day your affirmation, reading it to yourself in a mirror. That's like a little bit difficult. Yeah, <laughs> uncomfortable. I'm <laughs> yeah that, that that's good then yeah i'm gonna actually work on that as well um i actually write i use i write with a sharpie on my mirror because you can erase it so i write things mm -hmm. in the morning it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, and you can just like write like little things or affirmations on there so, like directly on your mirror and just wipe it off mm -hmm. but um no i think i think that's a big thing is is if people are using affirmations and and self-talk you have to make sure it's the right ones if you're writing something down and it feels like it's say i'm writing down i'm worth Five hundred million dollars today, mm -hmm. and that's like my affirmation. I don't know, and I actually don't feel that, and it feels horrible. Then it's not a good one. You have to start up smaller, because you're actually doing. You're doing the. I think in my eyes, you're doing the reverse. So you're actually hurting yourself by digging that belief. Because every time you look at it, you're gonna be like, oh, I, I feel like that's not true. I feel like that's not true. Mm -hmm. So if you can start up smaller than that and be like, okay, I'm worth, I don't know, a hundred thousand dollars, and it actually feels good, then you get that belief up, and then you take steps, and then next time you can go to like, okay, I'm worth five hundred thousand dollars. And just you keep taking steps up and up and up 
I think that's a big issue people have is is making huge affirmations that they actually have no belief in it at all and it actually but how do you do compare that them. with you know like when they say you have to have the huge goal that you won't ever probably reach so you have that you know like oh my gosh i'm just going that way because this is something that i also like, i i know how to work about it with myself but like how do you understand that and how do you use it so, so you mean I have that big it's, goal? Yeah, because you're saying you see, like, okay, if you write, like, I'm I'm five million worth, okay, so that would be the big goal. But then you don't practice actually that affirmation. It doesn't work because you're not believing in yourself. Yes, so that actually means that then you shouldn't have that five million goal. Yes. Yeah. So, um, for me personally, I don't set something that that I have those goals written out, but my goal statement is like the next step within a year. Mm, okay. So it's not. Like maybe my goal, my net worth, I want my net worth to be, say I want my net worth to be 500 million for my whole life. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be on my goal statement. I look at every day personally mm -hmm. for me, okay. mine's, mine's just going to be my next step for the next six, six mm -hmm. months to a year so that I can do that. And then I can recalculate. Cause honestly, I wrote a huge goal on my goal statement. And, um, I think at the beginning and it was a ridiculous amount. And I just, one day I just looked at it and I was like, I just don't believe this. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like, like the, yeah. and I, really ch I changed it. I, I dumped it down to something that was more digestible for me. And now I look at it every day and I'm like, oh, oh this is perfect for me right now. So yeah. it's not being, you don't have to be greedy and be like, oh, I want a hundred million dollars right now. And like, I don't, I don't believe in that. I think t making it digestible so that you can apply it now. Cause if not, you're going to, you're going to have paralysis and, and not take action on what you need to do. Exactly. But then you see like them, the quantum leap. It just happens sometimes out of blue, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um, I mean, I may I may be in a quantum leap right now. I don't I don't really mm -hmm. know. I don't know if you know until after. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so so I think I think to answer that question, I think it mm -hmm. does happen. Like you kind of just look back and like, wow, wow, exactly, that all happened yeah. in, in that short amount of time. Mm -hmm. That was like that was like ten years of progress in in, in a year. So I think I think you kind of just look back and know that it happened or or people can see that around you mm. and you don't have to be uh you don't have to brag about it or anything like that but you just you just know what happened yeah all righty um let's see what else is there if you have something to share we could share the last ones and then uh finish up the podcast i like also the three ways to increase your income what was the one was you can get more clients you can um uh, what was it i have to look back at it this the third one was clients who come back to you i remember that i don't remember the second one. Oh, that was, that was, it was a, a, a fairly easy but i had i had not thought about that like in such an easy way yeah i think i think a good point they made was the difference between a customer and a client mm. and they said a customer um i think i wrote it down i'm looking at it a person who purchased a, a service or product is a customer but a client is a person that is protected by you that's the difference. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's shifting your focus to really not be on myself, but to be on my clients and how can I support them and to over deliver and do things for them. So that I think that's a big difference. How, how are you going to apply it? How are you going to use it in your business? Like yeah, no, I, I use it all the time. I, I send out like, not, not to everyone, but I send out gifts for like birthdays and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So they just, they one day just open their mailbox and they find something in there that it was came from Dana just this mm -hmm. nice stuff that makes them, you know, feel, they feel like they're, that I care about them and I do care about them. But I, I think a lot of people, especially with the gurus programs and, and big programs like that, they feel like they're not cared for. They're just a number. Um, so it's a way, it's a way to, you know, have that relatability and, and have that with your client and build that relationship up. Yeah. I suppose if you're doing like a huge something online groups is not really you know possible as well for all people but then if you do the a little bit just i mean like the private coaching or less people than it's possible because if you had a group of like thousand people sending out gifts to everyone well the pdf ones <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and i think like a thing i do is if a client is struggling with something and we don't have a scheduled call or stuff like that i can i give them access to my phone number so like they can text mm. me or they can mm -hmm. shoot me a call because I think at the end of the day is it's it's remember I know everything's virtual and it's hard to it's it's really really cool mm -hmm. how far technology has came but it's just like being a human if that makes sense like like doing what you have to do having good morals and and, and providing the value that you need to provide. Okay, they're saying on Instagram that your sound is gone or something. Ooh. Check it. 
I'm back. Let me see. I'm going to check on mine as well. We can hear you. Hello. Oh yeah, you're back. You're back. Yeah, no, um, <laughs> it, my my battery went down. It gave me a notification. Um, All righty, cool. Yeah, so okay. it's just just going that extra step with that. And and then the last thing for me was um, they gave a lot of good insights into uh, social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, how to use that for business, how to connect with people, develop relationships, start uh, groups on Facebook, mm. how to set up your Instagram for success, uh, hashtags, like the list goes on. That was that was a very, very good job. That was super um, hands-on. Yeah, yeah. So I think that if, if people are, are in business and trying to increase their following and stuff like that, that was a, an amazing approach of sending direct messages and building relationships and getting people into groups and going live. Like they're, um, I'm just trying to get it out quick, but there's just a lot of, a lot of steps that could really help people grow businesses. Yeah. And it's also, I think it's great nowadays with all what you said about social media, rather to go there and create stuff and give something out than just like swipe and consume. Cause that's where th people get anxious and all, you know, depressed because they're not doing anything. They're not taking that action. But if you're actually there creating and then creating and connecting with amazing people, you know, like that you meet online, it's good. It's amazing place where to hang out. <laughs> and, and just, yeah, just networking in general with people mm -hmm. that are like-minded is just huge because honestly on my journey as an entrepreneur from corporate to entrepreneur, it gets lonely sometimes. Like there's a lot of people that aren't thinking the way that I was thinking, especially mm -hmm. being in programs and, and hearing from these, you know, multimillionaires like Bob, Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi, they do, they truly do not think like other people or other people do not think like them. That's the truth behind it. So when you have these ideas coming from one source and then you have these other ideas coming from another source, they hit a collision and a conflict and you have to be like, Oh my gosh, like, like what's the right one? Um, mm -hmm. I need, and you need to know who to model and who to follow. So I'm growing my coaching business. Like, I'm sorry to my, my, my friends or family that's saying this, like I have to listen to Dean Graziopi, Bob Proctor and uh, Tony Robbins because they've done it. So my exactly. advice with that is, is to only listen to people that have done what you want to do. I, like another example quickly is, uh, entrepreneurs like I could have a bunch of entrepreneurs that didn't make it and their businesses fail tell me to never do that it's a waste of time and and say they're like 60 years old but the truth is now we have the internet we have more resources than ever we we can access mentors like this we can talk to people we can do podcasts and they never they, they stop trying you know they, they stop trying so they're going to be um, they're going to be biased on that approach. So you have to watch out who you talk to and, and just finding. Exactly. I think that's finding, such yeah. a great advice that like, that's yeah. perfect. I always ask this to, to myself when someone is, I tell someone some amazing stuff, some idea, and they're like, Oh, something. And I'm like, wait, 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 Monta. I'm like, has this person done this before? Probably no. So like go to someone who, and that's, and that's actually a nice stuff for me. It's like reminding myself, go somewhere where it's a little bit uncomfortable and maybe ask the question there. You know, like ask the person who is really competent in your area and, and, and then get that advice. But that's sometimes also the scary one, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's it's, that's actual one. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing of like, okay, if I'm trying to earn more money, would I ask someone in poverty how to earn more, more money? No, mm. you shouldn't. If, would you ask someone who's single how to find a significant other or become in a, um, come in a relationship and stuff like that? No, you wouldn't. You just wouldn't do that. So Sometimes it's you step back, take a breath and just realize who it is. And, and like I said before, luckily we have books, we have uh, coaching programs. I would, I would get a one-on-one -on -one coach if you can find one. Um, but you have all this access to resources mm -hmm. more than ever. So I think we have uh, at our age and stuff and anyone really has no excuse to really not take a step towards what they want. And, and sometimes you got to do that. So I think I, and then going back to the MSI connect program, that that's a great place for that. Yeah. Cause I was looking last week, I think it was just Thursday. I was like, I just want to find like a mastermind group an accountability partner. And I have a couple of accountability partners, but uh, I'm still looking for a really, really good one. And I asked my coach yesterday as well. And she, she told me like the steps that I should, how I should search and ask for. But then again, I asked her for the mastermind. And then later in the night, I just joined the mastermind there yesterday. I was like, Oh, there's my mastermind. Like, oh, sort of like check, check, check. Cause you have to know like what you're also looking for. And if you can't afford a coach, get at least a like accountability partner. I think mm -hmm. that's an amazing, like if you have some of your goals and if you have someone who is also working on their goals, that's perfect. Not someone who is sleeping at home and doing nothing. Cause they're just going to be like, Oh, okay. You're doing stuff. Okay, good. And that, Oh, you're not doing, I don't care. You know, but someone also who's going for something. So I think that's also good stuff. Accountability partner. If you don't, yeah. If you can't afford a life coach or something. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's, you could just find a friend to hold yourself, each other accountable. You could find someone virtual. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you could do different exercises with people through text. But I, I do think that it is necessary to be in sort of program or do have a coach oh, in yeah. a sense. And yeah. the reason people think about the money, oh, I don't want to spend that money. But the truth is that's going to like me having a coach and, and investing in myself probably send me decades of time, save me decades oh, of time. Definitely. So I think that's worth every single dollar instead of waiting until I'm 40 years old or 50 yeah. years old and then deciding that now and that then I I'm have like, the money. I believe myself. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> no, it's, it's more about also like believing, you know, like the coach makes you uh, do things. Um, I had um, my, yeah, I have been having my coach since I think earlier this year, um, maybe like March or something, no, or April, whichever, but not for too long. But when we first started, like she was my coach, then she offered me to go in into like coaching groups with her coach along. And I was, I wasn't feeling like I'm worth it. I was like, I'm just, you know, like I need a coach to, you know, like to grow. And then yesterday we had a call and I was like, oh my gosh, like I feel finally, I feel like equal. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what, what it does, like your growth and the, the mindset and everything you do along the way. It's like, oh, okay. Like finally, I feel like, finally, I feel like you saw me before. Yeah. And honestly, if you, if you are listening to this, you have a big dream or you have an ambition or an idea and stuff and you're not acting on it, you're doing a disservice to everybody that you would have impacted. Like, mm -hmm. like I believe we're all here to, with a mission and to do something and to get clear on that. And obviously it takes some people more time than others, or maybe it doesn't. But I, if you, if you go through your whole life and like I said, if I go back and I'm fast forward till I'm 85 years old and I didn't do any of this, then I would literally sit there and be like, what if, and that's a, yeah. that's a situation that, it's like a nightmare to me. So it's like, if I just keep doing what I'm doing and I get in and yeah, it's gonna, there's gonna be a lot of obstacles and it's gonna be scary, but that's, that's the beauty of life. It, it's that it's not a straight line. Success is never mm -hmm. like that. And that's crap. It's, it's all over the place, but it's finding the beauty and the doubt. It's finding the beauty in those obstacles and understanding it's part of the process. And, and I don't know if I said it before, but it's like who you become in that process, not the final goal, exactly. regardless. That's what people have to focus on is, oh, this last year, I became this person because of doing these actions. And like you said about the, the speaking, the comedy. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. And even even with the money, I know we're going back to money right now, but 80% of people that win the lottery, within five years, they lose all of the money. And we're talking about millions of dollars. And then over 70% or 75% of, I think, like NFL and NBA athletes, after they retire, they lose, it, they lose all mm -hmm. within like 10 years as well. And that's because they have not built up that mindset aspect, the 80% that I was talking about. They have not built that foundation. So um, the, the smarter ones will be able to put people in place and find the who's and be able to hire these financial advisors to handle the money. But the issue is, the whole thing is you, with anything in your life, you have to build that foundation or eventually it's going to, uh, over time, it's going to either not feel good. You're going to feel like you're kind of like a fraud or uh, mm. what, what do they call it? Impo imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're going to have imposter syndrome or you're just not going to take that action. So it's really about uh, working on yourself internally first and then applying those action steps. And I think what you mentioned also, like I have how many hours I have to live uh, on my wall. Well, I haven't done this <laughs> year, but, but it's a good like thinking about your death and like where you are in your timeline. I mean, like we're not internal, our soul is, but like in this body, you have a certain amount of time and then it's like, okay, what do you want to do? Like from now or the next five years, like if you want to climb the Mount Everest, like which like how many years do you still have for that you're not going to be able to do that when you're 90 and so so yeah, yeah thinking those things yeah. is also always super super motivational like if you're trying to find your like how can i decide on my life goal I'm like well look at like how many years you have got left and like how many yeah. actions can you take and like what do you really want to the end of the life like that's a good point and and that's really a perception and mm -hmm. i don't know where you built that but specifically for me i lost um, my aunt and uncle, the cancer when I was 16. And then I also lost an ex-girlfriend in a car accident. So I think that kind of gave me that perspective mm -hmm. on life. So that was like, oh my gosh, like I need to do everything now because my, my life could, could end today. Like, and, exactly. and I'm, you know, people don't think about that. Like we're not guaranteed another day. So it's being grateful for every moment that you have. Mm -hmm. And for me specifically, like losing those three people, I think I didn't notice that's why until like a couple of years ago, but then I pieced the things together. Cause when I was 16 and I lost my aunt and uncle to cancer, that's when I started working out and I became so healthy and now I'm like mm. so healthy now. And I did, I never knew why, but now I look back and I was like, Oh, it's because I didn't want that to happen to me. Yeah. So it's stuff like that. And thinking of you either have to have an experience happen to you or someone around you that gives you that perspective, or you have to read into other people's perspectives, mm. like books and coaching so that you can get it from there. But I think when people gain that, 
it's more about like, what can I, what can I do today? What do I truly want to accomplish today? Because I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. Yeah. And it's not, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying, Oh, like go out every single day and spend all your money and go on vacations and waste it all right now. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying build a foundational base so that you're a 1% closer to, to being yourself, like being happy. Yeah. And what I also ask myself is sometimes like, okay, if I don't, <laughs> sometimes I look in the mirror before going out and I'm like, okay, if I don't come back, it's like, what, like, what, is left after me like can the things that i'm you know like that are in my mind that i want to teach and share can someone use them afterwards and that's why i'm writing a book because that's what what you said about before like you're not doing anyone good if you're thinking at ho- like sitting at home thinking that you're not good enough to do the thing that you really feel called to do and and yeah and like are you building that you know whatever are you coaching someone who can coach others afterwards are you maybe yeah the book or the podcast or the video or whatever you're doing but like leaving some some things after you like the legacy and that that's a big one actually as well like when you start thinking from the point of like what what do i want to leave after myself like what what yeah. is going to be there and i was like pretty instagram pictures <laughs> i mean nope yeah that's that's a good point too is is the legacy of what you leave and i was actually i listened to this macklemore song it's like it's called glorious and he says you died twice uh once when you're buried and once when the the last person says your name. Mm, oh yeah, yeah. And I'm always like, oh, I thought about that. But yeah, that's a good. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a good point of of that whole aspect of looking at life as well. And I think I think that's that's huge as well. And just mm. um, find yeah, just I think finding out how you can just you be, be yourself because we can only we can only we are the best at being ourselves is what I'm trying to say right now. Like no one else on this whole planet or universe is better at being yourself than you. The exactly. issue is so many people have so many of those programs and conditions and filters locking who they are. And that's, that's the big issue. So it's just, it's, it's not looking at like these, these million dollar people and being comparing yourself to that. Cause that hurts. No, like I, I see people get them as a possibility. Yes, exactly. As a possibility and knowing that you just have to take that one step mm-hmm. every single day to get there. And, and, and that's their path as well. That's not, that's not my path. That's not your path. Exactly. We're not going to do that exact path, but having those role models, but not, but not like in my coaching, so many people are like, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not good enough to do this. I don't have this expertise. And the first question I ask is compared to whom? Mm. And that's, that's mm-hmm. NLP, that's, that's NLP right there. That's mm-hmm. neuro-linguistic programming. And that gets them to think about, okay, compared to uh, Tony Robbins again, I'm like, you're comparing yourself to someone that is 45 years into this industry. And he's one of the best on the earth. You don't, don't, yeah. don't you think that's a little ridiculous to not exactly. take, a, take a step today? focus on who you are today, how you can get 1% better today. And then eventually you'll be on your path in 10 years. And then they're like, Oh yeah, you're right, Dana. So it's just yeah. everyone, everyone settle down and just do what you can today. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. Um, any, any words about MSI? What would you like to say? Um, how can people find it if they want to join the same old cool things that we are doing? Was it MSI? Yeah. MSI? I don't remember now the website. <laughs> Yeah, MSI is the summit that we uh, we just discussed a bunch of topics and a bunch of our own topics from. Um, we were on the summit last weekend, and and I was we were both able to talk to Bob Proctor. He's a you know one of the best coaches in the world. Self, so a personal development company in the world, one of the top guys. He's a legend in that industry. Um, if you want to look into that, they do have a they have fourteen day trial, so two week trial for fourteen days. Uh, there's basically calls every day. There's networking. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff to do, and there's programs in there. You can go in there for fourteen days. I mean, uh, yeah, fourteen days for $14 and decide if you want to continue that continue on from there. It's like, have, you could just take like 14 days off and just do that. And I'll do this, uh, this share screen because it's going to go on YouTube as well. Yeah. And they can, they can um, sign up either under my link or your link. Yeah. So my links, my links Proctor, in my bio. And then, yeah. Proctor Gallagher dot Institute. Right. Is that correct? Cause I'm logged that, in. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's amazing that that value, like if you're going for something that you want to, you know, just improve or grow or whatever your mindset is at this point, it's, it's beyond, to be honest. All righty. Okay. Um, I'll finish off the Instagram. Thank you everyone who watched there and I'll save this so you'll be able to watch this later. Cool. And I'll save the video. Okay. I have to share it. Right. How are you feeling after sharing all these many things? 
good. It's a nice, nice refresher and nice to share with people, I think. And they're probably overwhelmed. <laughs> like, what's all this? Oh, so much information as well. No, that's good. I, this is what I, this is what we both like to do. So, um, no, exactly. And also like keeping in that vibe that it's, you know, like how great it is that. And yeah, I really, yeah. My, yeah. um, my camera was like a little off, off, but I think that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. That's Instagram. Oh, I just want to um, do a little bit. Let me... So once you, um, I love all this sharing and I hope we can really use the MSI and also, you know, uh, get out value for both of us there. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for having me on there. And that was a great discussion and obviously let's stay connected. Mm, definitely.